will walk your ideas. Oh yes, Satan will belittle your vision. He will walk your talents. God have mercy, help us. He will tell you that your directive is not nearly enough. He will tell you that your vision will never be enough. He will tell you that what you think God is going to do, He cannot do it through you. But I defy that lying spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever's in your hand is all He needs if you give it to Him. He is a miracle-working God if you will put it in the hands of Jesus. in the Holy Ghost right now. I feel, help me, God help me, I, I feel a wind of opposition trying to drive you back into your seat and tell you your reason's not enough, your ability's not enough, but that's a lie from hell because you and Jesus are always the majority. You and Jesus are always. Somebody stand in your feet Clap your hands, shout to that great God in us. Yes, yes, yes. Shout to your God with a shout right. Yes, yes. But can't you feel that other wind in this room that's pushing you? Yes, you can.
prejudice. We don't talk to y'all and y'all don't talk to us. I appreciate that, Ralph, and amen. So Jesus has our purposes of going through Samaria on purpose. Notice with me, though, he comes to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave his son Joseph. Notice with me, Jesus, the Bible says, is weary with his journey. And sits at a well and tells disciples, go into the city and buy food for us because we're all hungry. But I'm too weary to go into the city. And he sits at a well because he's weary with his journey. But he's still on a mission. I want to tell this beautiful church in the Philippines that it is possible to be weary in your journey, but not weary with your mission. It's possible to be weary with everything you have to put up with, but not be weary with your mission from on high. So Jesus sits because he's weary, but he's still in that giving mode. And he waits for a little woman to come to a well. She comes at an odd time of day because she's not even accepted by her own people. She comes bearing her water pot and Jesus asks her a question and inquires, would, would you give me to drink? Sir? You speak to me. Mm. Oh, now, if you only knew, if you knew the gift of God, if you knew who I was, you would say, Sir, would you give me to drink? Now, you got to catch this. He's weary. And if we're not careful, it's easy when we get weary. Right. To just look at people and say, I don't have time for that today. Woo. It's been two, it's been this been a rough day. Right. I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm gonna sit here. You go get your water. Bless your heart. I'm sorry, that's what we say in the States in Mississippi. Don't let us say that. You, you you go get all the water you want, but don't expect me to be a part of it. Because you see, I'm weary. But not Jesus. He's weary with his journey, my brother, but he's not weary with his mission. And he tells that matter of fact, I won't go into the details, you know the story. If we read the Bible correctly, you know the how, he probably gave her the greatest one-on-one -on -one revelation of his true identity of anybody else in the Bible. And he gave her that revelation when he was at one of the most weary times of his life. She goes running into the city. I know I'm just trusting you know the story. You, you, go call your husband. Well, just in case you know, I'll tell it to him. Go call your husband and come back. Sir, I have no husband. He said, oh, you're exactly right. Because you've actually had five. And the one you're living with now is not a legal marriage. And sir, you know when Messiah comes and he gives her such a revelation that she runs into that city and brings them back. And then and if, if history be correct, she is absolutely changed for the rest of her life. As Brother Matthew Buckland said last night, I, I said all that to preach this one point. When the disciples get back to where Jesus is, no doubt they're still sort of frantic. Perhaps it took longer to get back than they anticipated. They knew when they left, Jesus is weary. Jesus is hungry. we got to get this food to him as quickly as we can. And they run to where Jesus is and they bring their food. And Jesus said, I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry anymore. You went to McDonald's while we were gone. You, you, somebody else know I have meat to eat. 
that you know not of. Hear me. The Jesus they left was weary. The Jesus they came back to was energized. You, you didn't catch that. Let me try that again. The Jesus that they left didn't have time to talk to anybody because he's weary with his journey. But the Jesus they come back to is invigorated. He is encouraged. He is blessed. He's got energy. He's got excitement. He's ready to go again. And they look at him questioning. How did this happen? Well, all I can tell you is I have meat to eat that you know not of. Stay with me. That means that Jesus Christ received nourishment, energy, strength, encouragement, blessing from a source that was not human. It was a divine it was a divine source of strength and energy and blessing and power and glory. Because when we left, Lord, you were hungry, you were thirsty, you were weary with the journey. But you see, disciples, what you didn't realize was I was waiting for an opportunity to give. And when I started, when I started revealing truth to a woman that had no hope without me, all of a sudden, a heaven got my mercy, a heavenly door was opened, and strength started flowing from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, and strength and power and energy and nourishment and blessing flowed from on high. When I started revealing. I know it doesn't seem like it, but I'm closing right now for musicians to close. I want to preach to you. I've, I've never been here before. I'm, I'm deeply humbled and honored to be here. You are a powerful church, and we all thank God for you. But I know when the Holy Ghost speaks to me, and the Lord spoke to me about this service, and I am preaching to Pentecostals that are weary in their journey. Some of you have had things happen in your life that you never thought would happen. Some of you have lost loved ones and God still has not given you an answer. Some of you have faced circumstances that you cannot figure out and you don't have an answer for and you go to God in prayer and you've asked God for direction. You've asked God for an answer. You've asked God to soothe and calm and the answer hasn't come and the weariness hasn't left and the confusion still remains and the question still looms large and I thought that maybe I could pull Jesus away God help me right now I thought maybe Jesus would, would have such compassion on just me that for a little while I could have Jesus all to myself. But I've come to remind you, I want to tell this Filipino church, you are powerful, you are great, you are strong. But I'm going to prophesy to you in the Holy Ghost, there's another multitude that's on its way. That's all right, I'll keep it to you, believe it. There's another multitude. They're hungry for Jesus. And you can't hide. You can't cover it up. Stand in your feet with me and I'll close. Here's the skin of the hot dog. And you're so good at my eye. And you're so good at my eye. Coming in the name of Jesus. But I'm weary. But I'm hurting. But I don't know if I'm even going to make it myself. Jesus, I'm more vulnerable now than I've ever been in my life. Oh, I feel that word from the Lord. I'm not trying to be pessimistic this morning. I feel a word from the Lord. I'm preaching to people that are hurting, but God 
been being blessed for you. Amen. I'm picking the people that have been faithful to God for many, many, many years, and you're questioning the faithfulness of God. Because in your mind, I, I should be exempt from this. Speaking. I don't deserve this, Brother Howard. After giving my life to God, things happen. I don't have an answer for you. Some of 